Hi, this is Sally Morgan, craniosacral therapist, Tellington T-Touch practitioner, and physical therapist for animals and people. And this is Tristan, and he's a corgi. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, live from the garden. You can see my lawn bunny here that came here from New Jersey. He lived in my grandfather's yard for years. Lo and behold, it turns out he was a gift to my uncle for Easter from one of our aunts and lived at my uncle's house for a very long time and then he moved to Florida and so now the bunny's in my yard and the yard has been a little overwhelmed by weeds and neglect because of the ticks. <laughs> so yesterday I came out here with a long-handled weed whacker and had a little bit of a chop down so that I can see the things in my garden again and I'm hoping one day it'll be hot and stop raining so the ticks will diminish and I can spray and my helper Brian and I can come out here and do some weeding and get the garden back in shape but all the flowers in my garden are blue and purple and they bloom at different times so it's quite a beautiful garden for me because I love blue and purple. Tristan's sinking. Come here buddy. Ah, he's always falling. <laughs> he's, oh, we don't have too many extra pillows down on the patio so we'll just have to do it this way Tris. Try your best to look at the camera sometimes. So I wanted to talk today about the relationships we have with our animals. Um, it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately because there's this new TV show called Downward Dog about a dog and his person named Nan and the dog's name is Martin. And it's, uh, it just reminded me of something I've known for a long time and that is the way we interact with our dogs can really change our lives um, in a really positive way. Of course, there's many, many health benefits of being with an animal, you know, lower blood pressure, quicker recovery after surgery and heart attack, um, you know, better emotional state, better exercise. There are many benefits to having a dog or a cat in your life. However, um, one of the most important things that I've been thinking about lately is the relationships we have with our animals and the role they play in our lives. And a lot of people say things like, oh, my dog or my cat, he's like my child. But really, for a lot of people, it's not like that. That still diminishes the dog or the cat in a way and makes them kind of under your control. <laughs> and what I and a lot of people have and want with their dogs is a relationship of equality. And, um, companionship and partnership and just being together with your dog and I have a friend who has gone through a breakup a few years ago after maybe a five or six year relationship and she is in her 50s like me and she is devastated to this day that she doesn't have a partner she cries a lot she has a lot of issues emotionally and she just feels like she has lived her life for nothing and she's very successful professionally um, and has friends and has a pretty successful life but the lack of the partner in her life is making her feel like she has not accomplished anything and I who have been living alone for a long time with my dogs don't feel this sense of loss and deprivation and failure and loneliness that my friend does and one of the interesting things about this dog show is that when they go to dog training class, the dog perceives it as couples therapy, which in fact is what dog training school is if you go to a good place because it's a way of showing you, if the person's good, what your dog ha is trying to say and also helping you communicate with your dog. Sounds like couples therapy, better communication. And that is a lot of the work I do, um, is helping animals with physical distress, but also increasing the bond they have with their human. And so this show is so interesting because uh, it's only been on like three times. And the second or third episode, the dog thought that he had a crush on the person's boss. And so he goes to the park and he's running around with the guy and he thinks this is great and the guy's very irresponsible and it turns out that at the end the guy is saying mean things to the dog and ignoring him and the dog finally gets over his uh, love at first sight kind of thing and realizes that this guy is not in love with him, doesn't really like him, doesn't like dogs in general and doesn't like his owner 
and he realizes that even though his relationship with his owner is safe and he's been with her a long time and it's not as exciting as it was when you know they he was the first priority when he was a puppy that that's that's what he needs and that's what is a good relationship in his life so at the end of that episode the dog is happy to be you know comfortable laying on the sofa eating popcorn and watching TV with his person and you know a, a lot of people have deep relationships with their dogs and again I think it comes back to communication um, there was an article in the whole dog journal just lately about understanding your dog's signals and understanding dog language and I think there can never be enough of this no matter it's good or bad right or wrong we need to be better at understanding what our dogs are telling us by their posture, their breathing, where they're looking, their stance, their tail carriage. Everything about them tells us what they're thinking all the time. And being with Tristan, for me, is just the same as being with another person. We have conversations. I interact with him. He tells me what he thinks. And I swear he's learning words. Sometimes he will go over to the treat jar and he says a word that sounds just like treat. And when he wants a walk and breakfast, he, he really has a way of communicating what he wants. And if I take the time to listen and understand him, it's like having a conversation with a person. We have games that we play where he barks and I bark back, and he loves that game. And he tries barking three times to see if I bark back three times. And I just keep mimicking him so that we have some kind of communication that way. And it really creates a deeper relationship with your dog. And this is part of the point I tried to get across in my book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with Animals, available on my website, my sister's website on Amazon, is this relationship you can have with your animals. Your animals are, they have so much limitless potential to connect with us if we can just understand what they're trying to say. And to me, my relationship with my dogs are, and my horses and my bunnies have been some of the most profound relationships in my life, you know, human or animal. And it's really important that we recognize the role of our animals in our lives this way. It is such a horrible, painful loss when we lose one of our animals. And, you know, Bernie Siegel and others, me, have said that part of the role of animals in our lives is to teach us about living and dying. And they do it with so much dignity and wisdom. And we are just so lucky for their presence in our lives. But I think that, you know, if you really focus on your dog and really understand him, that you will start to have a deeper relationship with him that's fulfilling for you as well as him. My poor single 50-year-old friend doesn't have a pet. She works a lot. And I think that if she had a dog and have the appreciation for them as being equals and not just a pet, that she might not feel so much loss and loneliness in her life. You know, I spend so much time with Tristan. We do everything together. Part of it is because he's a service dog, but he's also just a great buddy. You know, we walk on the beach together. We go to stores together. We go to work together. We take walks down the middle of the road to avoid the ticks. And he got to see his little friend yesterday and play outside. And he has a different bark. When Coco walks by, it's a very high... Oh, he loves her. He heard his, her name. It's a very high, quick series of barks. And I know that she's out the window. And there she was waiting in the driveway for us. And we made a date to walk together later. And so, you know, pay attention to your dog. When is he barking? And there's a squirrel bark. There's a mailman bark. There are all kinds of barks that our dogs have, and they are trying to communicate with us. Um, as Linda has often said, many dogs' only job left for them is to be um, our guard dogs and to let us know when something unusual is going on. So they have taught themselves to bark to communicate with us. Try to understand them instead of yelling at them and trying to stop them from barking. We always in T-Touch world say, thank you for telling me that the postman is here. I really appreciate it, you know, and, and then the dog almost always stops barking. And Tristan definitely has our letter carrier bark down, and I'm happy when I hear it because often I'm getting things in the mail that I really need, and I'm happy to know when they're arriving. So try to think about connecting with your dog in a deeper way and about the relationship you have with your dog or your cat. I know people with cats, um, wonderful cat people, who have such deep relationships with their kitties. They know the individual personalities of all of their kitties. They have special games with each of the kitties. Um, a husband and wife, for instance, will know which kitties prefer which person in the family, and they are 
really just deep relationships with their cats. And I've seen this with bunnies and even ferrets and dogs, of course, and horses. And dogs and cats in some of the house pets get to live with us in our home. So they have the possibility of connecting on a very deep level with us. And I really think that, you know, I should maybe get my friend a puppy, but she's not home enough to really take care of them. So I don't even know if that would help her. But certainly many of us are fortunate enough to have dogs in our lives to help us and, and to be our partners and to be our companions and to be our best friends. And really Tristan is so important in my life. I can't imagine, as I've always said, a day without a corgi in it. And he does so many cute things in the morning. He lays with his feet behind him in what we call the corgi sploot position every morning when we first get up so that I can tickle his little toes. And he always has some cute expression on his face when I wake up in the morning to say good morning. And then he has these different kind of whines that he makes that'll be like breakfast, out, um, get up. <laughs> and so I know that he has a plan even though it's just the beginning of the day. And one of the many, there's many studies now that dogs and people have an increased level of serotonin and oxytocin, which is the feel-good hormone and the hug hormone, as we call it in T-Touch world for oxytocin. And those hormones are the same ones that increase in your brain when you are looking at a person that you love. And the same thing happens to you and the dog when you gaze at each other. And some dogs don't like to be gazed directly at. I often encourage people to gaze at the dog's paws because then you're looking at them, but you're not being threatening in any way. Different breeds of dogs have different ways of interacting with each other. For instance, a lot of the herding breeds have almond-shaped eyes, which are that way so that they can... Um, look a little more scary to a sheep or a cow or a duck that they're herding and it makes it uh, hard for other dogs to read them sometimes because a dog with a more round eye like a Shih Tzu uh, will have a hard time understanding what a herding dog is saying when his eyes are already a little squinty. So things like that do make a difference when you're looking at your dog but herding dogs in particular which of course are one of my favorites because I've had lots of them um, they are used to having different kinds of stare, the stare at the sheep to don't come this way, to run this way, to go that way. And so they are more used to using their eyes to give different signals. And so for instance, it may be easier for someone with a herding type dog to, to gaze gently at their eyes and have that connection. And if you have another breed, maybe um, a boxer or a type of dog that's been used like a pit bull for guarding um, in a more uh, traditional way, you might have to gaze softly at their feet so that you don't appear threatening to them. So the gaze is really important. Dogs and people released more serotonin and oxytocin with gazing than they did with playing. And they found this was not true with cats. And there's many reasons that I believe um, that that was not found with cats. I think cats are a different kind of animal. I think staring at them is perceived differently. I think that uh, sometimes a kind of quiet play with a cat, you know, like tapping one paw and tapping the other while the cat's sitting on your lap, um, interacts with the cat more than gazing at him. So I think they need to talk to some serious cat owners about how they know their cat loves them and then redo those studies to see if the oxytocin and serotonin levels are increased in cats when they do particular things that are more kitty-like in the first place. So I encourage all of you to do what you can to interact with your dog, to really understand what he's communicating to you. People um, have such a hard time understanding their dog's posture. I mean, just the stiffness in the dog, the, where the ears are placed, um, how, where he's looking, can show you so much about what he's feeling and really change your relationship with him so that you do have a deeper connection. And lots and lots of people I know um, in the T-Touch world and otherwise have very deep connections with their animals and I know my mother would never feel lonely if she had a dog in her life and she likes big dogs and she likes lots of animals and right now she's got chickens and lots of dogs and her ponies and lots of people around her but there are many people um, many old ladies with just a cat who do not feel lonely because they have their kitty and it's really important that we recognize the importance of the relationships of these animals in our lives. It is just 
not like in that TV show. It's like that for a lot of people, and it's not a huge exaggeration. Dogs really love us, and we really love them, and we are so lucky that we have found them and had them be available to be in our lives. It's really important to dogs and humans, the relationships that we have. Dogs do so many things for us. You know, my dog Comet worked after 9-11 to help people with their grief. Dogs were working after 9-11 to find people in the, in the rubble and, and belongings. And, you know, dogs work all of the time for us in airports and all over the place doing sniffing work and tracking work and recovery work. Dogs are an incredible, incredible gift to us. And I saw a trailer, there's a movie coming out in July, a true story about a woman who was in the armed services who was working with a bomb-sniffing German Shepherd. And of course, they don't let you bring those dogs home. And she was injured and came home, and she fought to bring her dog home. And it is an incredible story. I hope the movie is good. We ha don't always have great dog movies, but I think this one is going to be a good one. Of course, the trailers always look fabulous. But the relationships we have with dogs really can be life and death situations. There was a story down near my sister's area of a parrot who saved a family from a house fire by screaming until they woke up and they couldn't get the parrot out and then they found him charred and he recovered and uh, you know was a real hero. And it doesn't always be just dogs and cats that are having deep relationships with their people. Lots of those big birds really love their people and it's devastating to them when a person has to go in a nursing home and they have to give up their parrot or their cockatiel. I know my sister had uh, a big parrot that just loved her and she gave that parrot one of the only stable environments he ever had in his life and it was a good thing for that parrot and you know he really loved my sister she knew what kind of foods he liked she would bring him out on her shoulder um, he did not like a lot of other people he often was uh, nipping the noses of her children and her various other people in her life but you know we have profound relationships with our animals and it's really important that we recognize that in ourselves and in other people you know, it might not be your type of dog, <clears throat> it might not be the exact way that you would treat a dog that you see another person with your dog, but dogs are really critical to our lives and I know that my life has been enriched immeasurably by the animals in my life. All right, Bis, oh he smells so much of cedar. He basically had a bath in cedar yesterday so that he can go for a walk and he hasn't had any ticks since we over cedared him. So. And, you know, I'm going to be doing a bunch of these lives from Provincetown because I'll be there for two weeks in July. And the people there are just amazing dog lovers and animal lovers. And I'm hoping to be able to interview some of the people I know about the animals they have and the role of their animals in their lives. We are so fortunate to have animals with us and to spend time with them. They teach us so much about ourselves and about the natural world. And I can't emphasize enough <laughs> how important it has been to me to have animals in my life, which you can read about in my book. So when you're watching that new TV show, Downward Dog, think about your dog as not your child, but as your partner in life or your horse. Um, I've had many stories of my horses stopping on the trail um, and saving me from things that I was not aware of. And, you know, my dogs certainly have done plenty of amazing things. And all of our animals do amazing things every day if we just take the time to listen to them and to look closely at their posture, their expressions, their breathing. Right, Tris? Yeah, you're a good boy. I know your mommy loves you so much. And his little fairy kiss. <laughs> He's chosen by the fairies. That's why he has a kiss. Every dog is chosen by the fairies, every plant, every person, every living thing. So have a great Sunday. Enjoy some time in your garden. We're supposed to have rain again this afternoon, and it's going to rain continuously for three more days here in New England. So my, my tick breeding activities will really flourish. <laughs> and one day it will stop raining, and I can spray and reclaim my garden. I think you can see there's a few purple flowers here. I've got something I don't even know what it is, and some catnip, and the little blue flowers are forget-me-nots, 
and pretty soon I have two beautiful delphiniums. They'll be out, and I have some blue irises called Blue Tide, and oh god, they're a gorgeous color. I can't wait to see them. So, enjoy some time with your pet today. Right, this, and enjoy some time in nature if the weather is good in your area. Get it while you can, even though it's summer. It's not really uh, always nice to be outside. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi joining you for another Conversations with a Corgi episode. And today we talked about having deeper relationships with your pets. We'll be back on Wednesday at 8.25 for another episode where we'll be looking at some more wraps for people and continuing on from there. So have a great couple of days and we'll see you soon.